how cool is this? I'm just kind of hanging out by this rock face here. Right now, it's a unique way to explore, I'll tell you that. Today, we're gonna be exploring the waters of the Francis E. Walter Dam Reservoir by my inflatable kayak. I found this place earlier this year for a roadside finds video, and there's some rather unique information tied to this place, which I'll share a little bit later in the video. But if you'd like to see what this body of water is like, all you have to do is grab your life vest and come along with me. I recently put out a poll asking the viewers if they'd like to see how my inflatable kayak gets set up and ready for the water, and the winning vote was yes. So today, I'm gonna to show you what it takes to go from bag to water. I also need a name for my kayak, so if you have any good suggestions, leave a comment down below. When you take it out of the bag, you wanna unfold it, get it opened up as much as possible. And this one on the inside, there's three chambers that you have to inflate. Number one, and they're labeled, Number one is the base, two and three are the sides. And they also give you this gauge, which helps you inflate it to the proper pressure. General rule is if it's a really hot, warm, sunny day, you wanna inflate it a little bit softer because it will expand with the heat. If it's a cooler day, you can make it a little bit firmer. But if you're not sure, you can just use the gauge, which once it's inflated, I'll show you how to do that. Although I sped up the video, it took pretty much just about five minutes. And this to show you if you do want to see the proper pressure, there's the gauges there. You just line it up as necessary if you need to. But if I feel, I have a pretty good sense of it. So number one's the base, two and three are the sides. Number four is this ring. And lastly is the seat. Now, a tip for you that I learned that with the seat, you could inflate the back part that you sit against as firm or soft as you want. But the bottom part that you sit on, I actually only half inflate it. The reason why is because you're already sitting on a cushion of air. Number two, when you inflate it to its max capacity, you sit up higher. So when you have it half inflated or not inflated at all, you'll have a lower center of gravity and you'll be more stable in the kayak. We're about 95% ready to go. I got the seat inflated and tucked in there. The only thing that's left is to put the paddle together and if you want to attach the skeg. Now there's something I do want to show you on here that I wasn't aware of at first. There is a drain plug. So when this is opened, this allows water on the inside to drain out when you remove it. That's only if you get water inside. You want to make sure this is closed and sealed before you go in the water or else water will enter into the kayak. Now with your skeg, this one comes with two different ones, a longer one and a shorter one. So I believe I used this one last time. Maybe I'll try the shorter one today. And all this basically does is help keep your kayak straight when you're paddling in open water. Instead of the kayak going like that, it's minimized. Now you don't want to use this if you are going down river or shallow water or where there's going to be rocks because obviously this is going to scrape on the ground. And that's it. We are ready to go. Just have to get my life vest and get into the water. Realistically, if I wasn't filming and explaining things, I could have this all done from bag, ready for the water within five minutes. First time, it may take you closer to 10 minutes, but the great thing is everything's included, including the pump. Everything fits in the bag, so you don't have to bring anything extra. Now, you can use a powered pump, the kind you use for air mattresses, 
The only concern with that is that you can potentially over inflate it because it is a much stronger airflow and you can break some of the seals. So I recommend using the pump that comes with it that we have better control over the inflation of your kayak. Are you looking for a fun gift idea for someone that you know? Or maybe you want a personalized video that you get to keep forever? If so, click my Cameo link down below in the description. So that was my first entry via the water. Got my feet wet in that one. They don't have a dock here or anything like that. But that's okay. It allows me to get some more experience. I'm also working with a couple different camera mounts this time. I do have you guys on a little tripod in front of me here. I will have you on the neck mount. And I did bring my waterproof case, so we will get some underwater footage as well. But I'm not going to explore the whole lake. This is a pretty large body of water. It goes actually for a couple miles in the back direction there. But we're going to just check out some main parts here and give you my overall experience of the Francis E. Walter Dam Reservoir. And of course, I picked another windy day, batting a thousand, my second outing ever on the kayak. And two times in a row, I do uh, come on windy days. And I have to watch because there's actually a underwater obstacle here guardrail right here that you see behind me is underneath the water here because this is a road in the off season. I actually just went over it. Thankfully I didn't scrape on it. Right there is the big air chamber. Now somewhere beneath the surface is a drain or a pipe where the water does flow out through the spillway or the levee wall and discharges on the other side. I did show that when I was here last time. And I will be back over the winter, as I said, to explore this park, this reservoir more because pretty soon this water level is going to get dropped drastically. And there's actually a road out here that goes where cars could drive, where the water is now. And a lot more things are visible than they are right now. So I came just at the right time because usually close to October, this gets dropped. And just to let you know a couple interesting facts, number one, not only about that air chamber with the water getting sucked in beneath us, but this is also the relative starting point of the Lehigh River and the main source of water for the Lehigh River. So Lehigh River flows down through Whitehaven, down to Jim Thorpe, Lehighton, so on and so forth. That river is popular with rafters and kayakers. Well, if there's ever a dry spell and the river levels drop too much, they release water here to raise the water in the Lehigh River so that they can have good conditions throughout the entire summer season. So it's pretty neat that they could do that with this source of water here. And here's a good look now right in front of the massive chamber. You can actually hear some sound inside like an air, air or water being like that kind of noise. It's an impressive sight when you're uh, down here by the water. I'm gonna see if I get a little bit closer to it. Just kind of floating in the wind here. So far this is a, a bit different than Moon Lake where I went the first time. I do feel a bit more vulnerable. It's just a, such a vast body of water, significantly deeper. And you're kind of at Mother Nature's mercy, especially with the wind today. I'm just getting blown towards the uh, levee there. So I got to make some progress. I think if I go up and around over there, there'll be some calmness from that mountain. And uh, it's like a little, I guess you could say, uh, calmer area, like a cove. So I'm going to try to make it over there. This wind is not helping, probably with audio and just conditions paddling. It was not windy when I left home, and it's a steady breeze here. It's making progress very slow. I 
got to take a little break. My forearms are burning. I'm making progress, just not a lot. But I can't believe how windy it is and the waves too. I'm just kind of seeing these white caps get larger and larger. So we uh, covered some ground, but got to give the arms a break. The one thing I will be doing 100% for next season is upgrading my paddle. Although this is sufficient and it's good for a starter kit, it is, I think, 90, I think it's 90 inches long, if I'm not mistaken. And I'm gonna get one that's 95. Uh, I feel like if I have a longer paddle, I'll get a better scoop and a better push. This one just feels a bit limited. And the one I'm gonna get will match my kayak blue as well. Oof, it's like I'm rafting down a river. Well, I will say the paddle back will be much easier because I'll be getting that back wind. And I think I'll have to come back multiple times to explore different parts of this lake. This will probably be my one and only time this season because, like I said, it'll be drained sh uh, shortly or soon. Although you can still kayak here, it just it won't be the same. So next summer spring and summer I'll be back more than once and we'll get to some further points in the back of the lake I have seen pictures of people here and there's like some some neat rocky cliffs and some areas that just look rather remote and isolated even though they're not it just has that appearance so I love to see those but with these conditions it would take me all day to get back there and It wouldn't be uh, enjoyable. Coming upon a lone tree in the water. Yeah, it's fairly far out here. Makes you wonder how deep it is here. I'm sure it's very deep. And that's just the tippy top of the tree there. I don't want to get too close just because there might be some underlying branches that could potentially poke a hole in my kayak. That's one of the downfalls of the inflatable, but we'll get as close as we can. That's about as close as I'm going right here. And just to show you where we came from, back there by the tower. But my goal is to get up and around here where I believe it's going to be calmer. It looks calmer at least. And those trees straight ahead of us should provide some protection from the wind. Not quite around the bend yet and really close, but I found this little, what appears to be a beach area and a little cove. I'm going to see if I can get in there. But I'm definitely heading in the right direction because the wind is calmer over here. It's not nearly as bad. You can probably tell the difference in the microphone too. Look at that. Give you a good view and didn't even have to try. <laughs> this might be a good spot to give you some underwater footage since it's relatively calm here. I won't get blown around. It's like a red bottom too. It looks really neat. I'm gonna get you guys set up. I don't wanna get too close. But I do wanna get you some footage. It's clear, shallow, and red. Now around the bend though, had to cut the underwater footage short. 
it started getting gusty. I was getting blown right into the shore. So now I'm on the other side here and there is a wind, but now it's a back wind. So it's blowing me back here, I believe. I could be wrong, but I'll double check. I think this is the connection of the Lehigh River. My friend Rick who comes here told me that if you follow this out, it gets pretty remote. And that somewhere, I don't know where, but somewhere on the right-hand side on a cliff, there's a an abandoned car. I don't know how far back it is. Don't know if it's visible with all the trees here, but it's like if you go that way, keep an eye out for it. I'm imagining it's pretty far back. I'm not going to go that far back today just because I have a long paddle back and arms are a little sore. I can actually relax for a bit. Breeze is blowing this way, so I'm okay where I am. Give my arms a break. Truth be told, since my first kayak outing, I mentioned it in that video. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to feel it in my shoulders. And I did. I think I pinched a nerve in the shoulder. It was pretty uh, sore and painful for about a week or two. It's finally better now. But I guess I tweaked it the wrong way or just used muscles I haven't used in a while. But yeah, this left arm, I had trouble even like lifting up like that. I couldn't go like past right here. So I guess it's part of the experience. Just had to nurse it and rest it and wait till it's better to come back out. It's actually a really chilly morning too. Started out in the upper 40s. When I arrived here, which was around 11 a.m., it was in the middle 50s, I think. And it's supposed to be a high of 70, but not until about 3 or 4 this afternoon. But it's nice, though. No humidity. It's comfortable. Although the breeze is annoying, it does feel good. But it's one of my last chances to get some color on the arms. But this is going to be... Uh, this will definitely be a place I'll be back to multiple times next year. I do have a small list formulated of places that I want to go kayaking, both lakes, some of them are within state parks, and a couple rivers. I'm hoping, hoping that some of my friends get a kayak for next spring, because I think we could have some pretty fun outings, and make for some fun videos and fun adventures. I know Jamie was talking about it, maybe getting one for next year. Matt was talking about it. And hopefully they do. I think they'll enjoy it. And maybe some of the other guys too will get on board with it. And if they don't, I'm still going to come out and enjoy myself. I'll be doing uh, kayaking outings every so often. Hopefully too, the camera angles are better this time. I am using my neck mount for those particular shots. I'm using the wider angle mostly, as most of you did give me feedback on that and for these shots right here I'm using the closer shot and hopefully with the combination of those it makes for enjoyable footage. Now there's a guy coming on a fishing kayak and he's got a little trolling motor he's just sitting there gliding along and you can hear that. I think a loud two-stroke outboard motor So I just double checked on Google Maps and I am indeed on what is considered the Lehigh River. So this is a connection of it. And it looks like when it goes around the bend, there's a side channel that goes kind of remote. That's something I definitely want to explore in the future. Yeah, you could go in a lot of different directions here. You could go straight back towards where Bear Creek flows into Francis E. Walter Dam Lake. You could Go off the side chute here up to Lehigh. You can take that other side chute, which is, I don't even know if it has a name to it. So there's a multitude of areas you could go. That's why I said if I have someone to come with, I wouldn't mind going to some of these more remote spots and seeing what it's like out there. I think that'd be a really fun adventure. Only when it's not windy though. Here's something that you Okay, I guess nature doesn't want me talking about that. <laughs> I 
I'm thinking there's some underwater currents here because I'm just randomly getting spun around and right here there's no wind at all. So what I want to mention is that a good way to tell what the underwater scenery is like or the landscape is what you see above ground. And here's a perfect example. So here is a basically almost a vertical face here. It's coming really steep down and then a vertical straight down shelf of rocks or a, a wall of rocks. Typically that's what the landscape is like underneath as well. And I'm going to try to confirm that with some underwater footage. So as steep as it is here coming down, it's most likely continuing that same trajectory underwater. There are exceptions, but usually you're at least 75% certain that's what it's like as well. So although I'm relatively close to the side, I'm fairly confident it's really deep here. You can actually see the water line. It's almost another foot and a half higher sometimes. Now the water is dark here because it's in the shade, but I'm going to mount you guys and stick you underwater and I think you'll be able to see that it pretty much keeps going straight down. Kind of excited to see that footage during editing. You guys have already seen it, but this is a nice little area here. I'm protected by this wall. There's no wind. I'm kind of basically floating in place, very slightly moving. I could get really close to this wall though, and I don't have any fear of popping the raft because I could see that it just goes straight down. Now back there is where there's a boat and looks like an island or an outcropping, but that motorboat that we heard earlier, I can still hear, he's going up that side chute that I mentioned that doesn't have a name to it. I can still hear his engine. It's He's going slow and steady, but the sound travels quite far, but that's where he's headed. He went around the turn and goes up, and I think going straight, stays on the Lehigh River. And looking at Google Maps, I'm kind of at an intersection here. So where that boat went, the one with the loud motor, he went around that way. That's still the Lehigh River. I thought that was a side chute. It's not. That's the Lehigh River that wraps around this piece of land directly in front of us. To the right, though, if we kept going back, that's the side chute with no name. And when Google Maps took this image, it looks like the water levels were dropped. And it shows me on dry land. <laughs> with my dot so I don't know how deep it is here but when the levels do go down where I am right now is typically exposed but that it's called lime hollow where that side chute goes I definitely want to go down that sometime as you saw I got you guys some more underwater footage here Landscape's gradually coming in. It's not deep here. I could see the bottom. Right here, it's about probably six feet deep, but as we get closer, it shallows out. But it's a nice, beautiful red color. It's really vibrant, especially with the sun shining through. And it's not too windy here either. So, taking advantage of that as I make my way straight across for the tree line which seems like it's going to take forever to get there, but like they say, slow and steady wins the race, although not in a race. 
but I'll be there in probably 15, 20 minutes. I'm making good progress now, but once I get out in the open and the wind kicks up again, it's gonna be a bit more challenging. We made some progress back here in the main part now. Back there is the Lehigh River section that we just came from. I was back there for probably about an hour looking ahead to where we started and then back behind me is the main part of the lake that goes for a few miles eventually where Bear Creek flows into this. But I'm still making progress over there to those rocky cliffs. But I have noticed the wind has died down. It's not nearly as bad as it was before. There's just some little rollers, no whitecaps, no strong gusts. So conditions are improving, which is good. Now those of you who do go kayaking or boating or just fishing on lakes, you're probably used to windy conditions. Places like this are prone to being windy and breezy just because they're so open, not a lot of protection, and the wind just blows right across the water. So it's not surprising that's windy here. It's more or less just frustrating. But I do know there are times where there's no wind because my family, when I was younger, used to have a boat up on Lake Wallenpapak in Holly. And that lake is notoriously known for being windy and choppy and just sometimes rough. But there were times where the lake was like glass. And I think it's probably generally towards the evening time. But you never can tell when it's going to be windy when it's not because where it might be like in the valley might be completely different here but there are times more or less chance of luck when you could come to a place and it's like glass I've been to Moon Lake twice once it was like glass when I returned to go kayaking it was windy when we started here today it was really windy with white caps now it's dying down so just how it is take the risk when you come out boating on a lake but rivers won't really matter so much because you're just going with the flow of the water all right, final stretch over to the rocky cliff. We'll check that out and then make it back to our starting point. Rock face right in front of us that goes straight down. If I can find a spot to kind of hang out here, I'm gonna get you some more footage. All right, this will work. I can hang out right here. So I could see with my own two eyes that the landscape is basically what we see here. And you can see the water line right here too. It's close to a foot and a half, two feet at higher times. I am kind of resting on a rock right here. My kayak is touching a little bit and I actually stopped earlier and got out to use the men's room. So I did roll up onto shore with a rocky base and no troubles. I didn't puncture anything, didn't get stuck. So this is more durable than I imagined. It definitely can't handle anything sharp like tree stumps or sharp branches, glass, sharp rocks. But roundy, roundy, <laughs> rounder, smooth stuff like this is not an issue. You could bounce right off of it, go over it. It won't puncture it whatsoever. So I feel more confident than I did from day one. But I'm going to get you guys set up and one more time we're going to take a look beneath the surface here along this rocky face. <laughs>
cool is this? I'm just kind of hanging out by this rock face here. I stuck you guys down as far as I could. I think I touched bottom, but I don't know if it was just a cliff or if it was the true bottom. But regardless, it is a straight face down. And the only way I can see this is by boat. Unless the water levels do drop and this is accessible. Right now it's a, a unique way to explore, I'll tell you that. I'm always fascinated by the landscape in places like this, how it changes so vastly. There's even like a little crevasse up here. Just pushing off with my hand, walking along the edge here. And I have to say the water's relatively warm too. And yeah, that's a big rock right here, a little crevice or crevasse. It's neat. Nice and peaceful right here. But here I am, next to the rock face. Hopefully you can hear me. Just before I saw somebody standing right up there on that little cliff. Might be a trail or path going to that. That would make for some nice views and pictures from there, I'll tell you that, because you could see nearly everything. And it's probably not coming through on camera, but as I look at the trees, primarily they're still green. But I do see just a couple that are turning red and orange and yellow. So fall is creeping up, but we're still, I think about nine days left of September as of the making of this video. And according to the calendar, it's still technically summer. But we are having some chilly nights. Hoodie weather is nearly upon us. But this is nice now because I do have that back wind I was saying I was gonna have and it's pretty much pushing me right to where we need to go. So I'm just, just basically steering at this point and taking in the sights and sounds. Another way I've learned to steer too, especially when you're propelled forward, is just to dip your paddle in the water. So instead of doing your traditional stroke, if I want to turn left, I could just dip it in the left and I turn left. If I want to go right, dip the right side in and I start going right. I'm sure many of you already know that, but <laughs> I figured that out on my own. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's my first time kayaking here. It's yeah, it was a little windy this morning, but it's calmed down a little bit now. Did you go? Yeah, I went back towards the river there. Yeah. A little bit better back there. So the person I saw up on the cliff is just sitting there hanging out. He's like, yeah, I usually have my kayak here, but today I brought my motorcycle and just kind of exploring and he did say there's a kind of a trail up there so it's good to know for the future mother nature is playing cruel cruel tricks on me this morning it was so windy there's white caps now that i'm trying to get back the wind has died down to nearly nothing and i'm making little to no progress just sitting here oh well that's how it goes a little more paddling Maybe it actually give us a chance to get a closer look at that tower. Because before I was trying to get close to it, I just couldn't stay near it. I was just getting blown in all different directions. So maybe I could get a up close look at it this time. And it'll work in our favor with these conditions. Unless all of a sudden the wind picks up right when I get there. I wouldn't be surprised. There's a depth gauge here with tile. It's actually a pretty cool shot. 
has 1,370 feet. It's right at 68. Is it really that deep here? 1,000, 1,368 feet? Or is it 368 feet? I don't know. It's kind of scary to think of it's that deep right here too because I'm not far from the shoreline. That would be like a massive drop off. I'm gonna give it a quick once over here since we did scrape on the bottom. I could see the scrape marks, just superficial scratches, nothing that really ate into it at all. So there's no chance of this leaking air. It's still solid, still intact, and it fared up fairly, fairly good. Especially even here, I had to come up onto the rocks just a little bit to get in and out. There is no dock here. Now, if you're done with it, to pack it away, you basically let it dry. You can either let it air dry or towel dry it. Open up the air valves. The air comes out in a matter of seconds. Fold it back up and put it back in the bag, and that's it. I mean, setup and takedown time is roughly 10 minutes total for both. think of what we saw today despite the rough conditions this morning it was really windy it's not too bad right now it's still breezy but not as bad as it was and we got to see a few parts of this body of water I think for me not only did I enjoy seeing that red uh, the red bottom beneath the surface and I think that's from Tannis if I'm not mistaken I could be wrong but I think it's Tannis that causes that red dark bottom the water is relatively clear but it's like a dark red. But for me, my favorite areas were those rocky cliffs and those rocky faces. The one around the bend where we went earlier and um, was getting you footage beneath the surface and then towards the end back there by where I was talking to that gentleman. Those were my two favorite spots. But next season, I will be back at least two more times. First, to go to the back part of the lake, back there, where it gets goes for a mile or two at least and you get really remote back there. There's some more rocky cliffs, some more little shoals and coves and calm areas and just things to check out. And then that Lime Hollow Run, which is that side channel off the Lehigh River. Hopefully I could come back with some friends. If not, I will be back either way. 
But before then, I will be back in just a few short months once the winter time is here because as I explained, this water level is gonna be dropped significantly, like a lot. And this road right here continues all the way down. We saw the guardrail underwater and the road actually goes near the levee wall I think to the other side, and you can actually park down here. So it's gonna be neat to see how it looks from today. And when we come back, it's gonna look like a whole nother place here. And we'll be able to hopefully get a better look at that air chamber, maybe the drain valve. We'll explore some more parts of the land, especially where we saw that gentleman earlier over to the uh, that cliff there. And also back down to the discharge area. So we're gonna explore it in depth on foot in the winter time. So if you wanna see that video, Make sure you are subscribed to the channel. If you do want to see more of my kayaking adventures, I do have a playlist just for that. And lastly, I just want to thank you for coming along for a wonderful day here in September at the Francis E. Walter Dam. Until next time, everyone, I'll see you in the next video.